In this video, we're going to take a look at Noodler's American Aristocracy. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion. Here is a, a very dark purple. So dark, I almost thought, is this black? But it's not quite, but very dark in what we're seeing right here. It has only the slightest tone variation by nib and never gives any shading, which isn't the end of the world. As a color on non-fountain pen paper, it looks pretty good. I think the color looks better on non-fountain pen paper than fountain pen paper. But aggressive. When you write with this ink, you also write on the page underneath. This means it's also very prone to excessive feathering and spread. Ultimately, this is an unusable ink for me, and I'm sorry to have to say it that way. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Hero 7035 with a fine nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the medium nib, we get a very nice darker purple here. I think the color that's happening right here is pretty darn good. This is pretty well on for what we're going to see with a lot of the non-fountain pen papers. Now, here it's not feathering and it's not spreading, which is really good. It's also not shading, which is fine. I think the color that we're getting is truly very interesting and it's nice. Looking at the broad nib, it is quite a bit darker than we had with the medium. And you're going to be seeing it. There's a bunch of tiny feathers all over this. And this is Clairefontaine paper. I'm not used to seeing that. And there's a bit of spread. And I'm not used to seeing that. Um, Claire Fontaine doesn't do that. This is not a good start. Now, there's no shading, but I said there was none. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same tone that we had with the broad. It does feather. What the crap? It does spread. Great googly moogly. This is bad and if you skip to the end of the review for this i kind of wouldn't blame you i don't know that it goes much better looking at the back of the page you see there's a lot of ghosting and especially with the stub and broad kind of minor with the medium i guess you could deal with that but at least nothing bled through and touched the page underneath to have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with. 
a Kaweco Sport with a medium nib. A Kaweco Sport with a broad nib. A Kaweco Sport with a 1.5 stub. The next writing sample is done in a Field Notes Steno Notebook. Looking at the medium nib, we get close to the same tone that we had on the Clairefontaine. It does feather a little bit. It does spread a little bit. I'll call both of those manageable here because I'm trying to find a redeeming part for this ink. It doesn't shade, and I think the color we're getting here is very nice and usable without any major problems as long as it doesn't bleed. Looking at the broad nib, it is quite a bit darker than we got with the medium. It does feather an excessive amount. It does spread an excessive amount. It does not shade. It does not belong being used in a broad nib on this paper or any other paper. This is, oh God, I'm going to power through this. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same tone that we had with the broad. We get feather, we get spread, we get no shading. But the color is actually very nice. I really like this very dark purple that I'm seeing right here. If I could get this very dark purple from them without the aggression of this ink, I think it would be much better. The great news is at this point I've already cleaned my pens and they cleaned without a problem. Looking at the back of the page, you see there is a ton of ghosting. There is no writing on the back of the page. Maybe with the medium, if you really wanted to torture yourself, but nothing bled through and touched the page underneath. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done in an Ampad Steno Notebook. Looking at the medium nib, the yellow paper did affect the tone just a little bit, but I still think we're getting a very nice purple, but now it's like leaning magenta a little bit. And that's okay. It still looks really good here. It does feather a little bit. It does spread a little bit. Both of those I want to call manageable in what's happening on this paper. It is not shading and we shouldn't expect it. Looking at the broad nib, we get a darker tone than we had with the medium. Still, just a little bit of a kind of magenta lean of this purple. I think it's being very interesting in what we're seeing. It does have a tiny little bit of feather. It does have a little bit of spread. A little bit of spread. Ha! You can watch it spread while I'm writing. The spread is strong with this one. It doesn't shade, but it does write. Looking at the stub nib, we get a slightly darker tone than we had with the broad. It does feather more than the broad. It does spread more than the broad. It does not shade.
looking at the back of the page, there's a lot of ghosting and there's no using the back of the page. And the page underneath, there was a lot of bleed through in everything that was circled. So there's no writing on the page underneath. I mean, I could, but I'm being dramatic here. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a national steno notebook. Looking at the medium nib, we get back to more towards a purple, a little less of the magenta here. It's not being as affected by the tone of the paper as much as it was with the last one. We do get a little bit of feather. We do get a little bit of spread. Both the feather and spread, I think, are much more manageable than they were with the last two papers. So that's doing pretty good. We're getting towards the right kind of thing here. We're not getting any kind of shading. Looking at the broad nib, we get a darker tone than we had with the medium. We get a little bit of feather. We get a little bit of spread. Little bit being a nice way to say it. We get some spread. It's like a whole dirty moment went in my head. We're just going to stop and say, there's no shading. Dirty, dirty ink. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same tone that we had with the broad. We get feathering. Yes, lots. Gonna be chicken for dinner tonight. We get spread all over. Still stuck on the dirty joke in my head from before. <laughs> we get no shading. We just get a gross performance. Looking at the page underneath, there's a lot of spots circled because there was a lot of dotting that next page. So it did bleed through, although not horribly. Looking at the back of the page, there's a lot of ghosting. So I don't think you could write back there. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Diamine Lilac Night. Here is Noodler's Concord Grape. Here is Sailor Shigor. Here is Wancher Original Ebine Violet. The next writing sample is done in an Office Depot steno notebook. Looking at the medium nib, we get a nice purple, little bit more of the purple than the last one. I think this paper is working a bit better. We do get a little bit of feather. We do get a little bit of spread. We do not get any kind of shading. I'm really looking forward to how this is done. This has become like, I am so in hope of this paper being the paper to redeem this ink <sighs> because it did beat up on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the broad nib, it is quite a bit darker than we had with the medium. It does have feathering. It does have spread. It does not have shading. I really like this tone that I'm getting right here with the broad. If I could get it without the feather and the spread, this would be amazing. With that, looking at this paper, the medium or most likely a fine would be a great choice, I think, as long as we're not bleeding. Looking at the stub. Oh, God. At the stub. <laughs> it feathers all the 
time. The feathers have feathers. The feathers of the feathers have feathers. It spreads over the first layer of feathers, but the spread feathers. It's feathery. It doesn't shade, and that's okay for all of the feathering and spreading it's doing. There's no time left for shading. Looking at the page underneath, we got one dot with the stub nib that came through and touched that page. This is a rock star paper. Look at the back of that page. The ghosting is absolutely there. You can't write back there, but man, it did not bleed through. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a green ink by KWZ, their Hunter Green. Here is a gray ink by Levenger, their Smoky. Here is a pink ink by Pilot, their Mixable Pink. Here is a yellow ink by Sailor, their Kobe number 21, Sai Sanjo. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the medium nib, we get a little darker tone than we had with the Clairefontaine. We get feather, we get spread, we get no shading. I think it can perform as well here as it did on any other paper. So. Good luck, everybody. Looking at the broad nib, it is a tad bit darker than it was with the medium. It does feather. Watch it spread while I write. And it doesn't have any kind of shading, but it is purple and on the page. And I would also say it won't move ever. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same tone that we had with the broad. We get no feather. We get no spread. Wouldn't that be nice to hear? Come on. Come on. I didn't get to say that at all, I think, in this review. We get tons of feather, tons of spread, no shading. What we do get is an absolutely horrific car wreck of an experience. I'm sorry. It's bad, and let's just say it's bad. Looking at the page underneath, it did have a little bit of bleed through right in the here region, constantly, quite a bit. I just didn't have uh, an afternoon to circle all of it. And looking at the back of the page, there's no writing back there because you could practically read it. So what nib and pen do I think is gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? Let's avoid this going into a pen, as I don't think it ever really will give a good writing experience. But if you really want to go after testing to see if you can do it, then I'm going to go for the driest, finest pen that you can find and see if that can give gain control over the aggression of this ink, and make sure that you really choose a great paper, like that Office Depot paper. That one just did amazing. I hope you got something out of this video, and if it leads to you wanting to try this ink when you purchase it, let the retailer know where you heard about it, whether it's me or any other channel. Thanks for watching.